Hello, Emily Miller. Kate Richard. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I am trying to, as we chatted a little bit before the show. Are you doing IT? I am. You know, our Facebook feed through StreamYard is not really working that well. Uh, they had a little notice up there. So it looks like everybody is watching on YouTube, which is great. I'm also um, on YouTube. I managed to have, make it happen. Okay. And I wanted to just say, Jan, thank you for telling me that your granddaughter's name is Emily. It's my favorite <laughs> name. And Alice, you live in my town because I live in Citrus Heights too. So, oh, I love that story. I love it. I don't think I can quite type and comment and read and do jewelry all the same, but I'm going to do my best to kind of keep my eye on um, what's Excellent. going on on that feed. Sure. Well, and I will, I'm going to try, um, I'm going to try and connect um, Facebook. I'm going to see if I can once you get started. So, um, but hopefully everything will be back um, to normal by Friday's show. Uh, I wanted to show you. There he is. It's a nice day for a light sweater. It is for, for a cardigan. Here it is. Mr. Idol himself, friends, I'm back from my rock and roll lifestyle. The big, how big was the venue that you were in? Was it like a stadium or was it? Uh, in no, it was at the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. So it was kind of an intimate video, but not super intimate. Yeah. We had really great seats. Um, I cried like a teenager. I danced until my hip gave out. It was all amazing. So yeah, no, it was. It was for him. You're saying no, that's it. Sciatica, yeah, no, I we we were fine actually, but it was super fun. Las Vegas is crazy. Uh, Billy Idol's in great voice, so I wanted to give you all a uh, a report. <laughs> William Brode is alive and well, and with me, I'm like wearing my concert t shirt like the day after, like when you go to school and you've been to the concert. Remember that. You don't have your you don't have your wristband on still. I still anything? don't have my yeah, not my wristband or my stamp. And I right? remember those hand stamps in college. Yeah, it no, was, it was a clubbing in high school because there was no clubs. But um, yeah, in college, I definitely remember going in the next week and having hand stamps and things. Yeah, like, all the stamps. I'm so cool. Yeah. I'm an art student, and I spent the whole weekend out, you know, doing this, doing that. Totally. Totally. Yeah. But, you know, we, it was a lot of fun. So Chris had fun. Christine, who some of you know, my dear friend who we used to own Benissimo together. Um, she shops Tucson with me. So uh, you can check my social if you want to see some photos, if you didn't see them. So anyway, enough concert talk. Um, it looks like a couple of people are watching on Facebook. I'm going to try and make sure that it's running. So sorry about that. You know, um, I went to see Pink here in Sacramento the other night and she said it was really an amazing show. And I was like, I didn't go. I should have gone. Yeah. Christine actually just went to see Pink. I know we're kind of turning this into like concert talk, <laughs> concert talk with Kate and Emily, but Christine said she was a freaking amazing. So, you know, I still love a concert. You know what? And I'll just, it was good. It was good, good time. So do it. Go to a concert, friends. What the heck? What the, heck? Um, the artists will love it that you're there and um, yeah. have an amazing time. Although apparently yeah. you got to like go through all kinds of security. It's been a minute since I've been to anything. But it's like yeah, especially uh, in Vegas, we had to go through metal detectors and stuff. But, you know, it was all right. Oh. You know, whatever. We We did it. So. It was good times and the gin and tonics were good times too. Okay. So let's um, get this show on the road. Emily, this is part two of your last week's. Yeah. I should be hydrating my own self. Let me <laughs> need to... it's Wednesday and I still need to hydrate. Um, from last week, uh, you got so many comments about your basic show. And I went back and I checked the timestamps. Ellen was timestamping it to um, 
uh, help people find, you know, the places that they wanted to go. Thank you. Yeah. Ellen's doing a great job with it. And you're that teaching we talked to, I know we talked a little bit about it after the show, that teaching, I was like, girl, that was some good teaching. I felt like I was back in the saddle. I mean, it was really, um, it I, felt I, like it. I can't say enough how much I missed the in-person stuff. And I know you guys all miss it too. Yeah. And I'm afraid those bead store days are gone. I'm hoping somehow it comes back, but um, it was really fun. And I really felt, I felt the love. I mean, I, yeah. you guys all there with me and, and maybe that's what the change is for me. I'm still focusing on that little dot and, you right. know, getting used to talking to myself um, because I feel like I'm talking to myself here. Yes. Wow. Well, <laughs> true I'm, enough. No one can see in my studio window to say, what's that crazy lady in there doing? What's she doing? Well, you created a really great handout. So Janice linked it there. But if you go to the project from last week, uh, it's right there. The link is there in the YouTube chat. So you can find it there. If you go under um, our learning and bead shop basics, I'll navigate for you folks at the end of the of the presentation, I'll share my screen and we'll navigate it up. Okay. So you folks can find it. Um, so today really is kind of part two mm -hmm. of put it all together. Yeah. I mean, it's a continuation. You yeah. have a piece that you're going to be working on called yeah. Colleen. Yeah. Um, you let me put it up so okay. you folks can I see it. Here's that beautiful necklace and Emily's going to wire wrap uh, with chain and beads and she's going to talk to you about how she designs it and all that good stuff. So without any further ado, with no more concert talk, I will, oh, and it looks like Lynn's watching from Facebook. That's great. I'm just going to check all of our connections to make sure that we are good to go. All right, Em, let me grab your um, demo camera here. Oh, let me push up just a little bit. Okay. Not so that you can see my pajama pants that I have on underneath this nice top or anything, but. Nice. Nice. No, it's actually shorts, but anyway. Nice. Perfect. And Janice is saying the project is in learning and then under bead shop basics. So that's great. Um, okay. I'm going to spotlight your vid. I'm going to mute me. So as I rustle around, people won't what? hear me. Are you rustling around again? I know. Russell, I'm going to rustle around a little bit, sure. but I will jump in if there's questions and stuff like that. So uh, let me get you here. All right. You are there and See? I'm going to mute me. Okay. So I'm so glad you guys hung in with me last week. And um, I know that was kind of an epic long broadcast and having timestamps put on the handout and everything is going to make life so much easier <clears throat> to kind of catch up on this. Um, but, you know, if you ever need a refresher and you want to just hang out um, with someone talking in your ear in the background, that's good to do, too. Um, this is really kind of the continuation of wire and kind of more on the idea of what are you going to do with that wire once you've got that skill um, of wire wrapping and putting things together. I adore matching beads and chain. This is kind of my other the other side to stringing. You know, stringing, we we can accent with things on head pins. We can. Um, add this to chain. We can mix chain and stringing all together. All those things can happen. But today I really wanted to talk to you kind of about how I do designing with um, chain and beads. And I have a good little mishmash of stuff here kind of on my, my workbench and some things that I showed at the, um, at the bead retreat as well. You know, we have a lot of chains at bead shop. Um, I think it's really nice to have a little sampling of something in your stash that you can pull out and play around with kind of as the mood strikes you. But the the necklace today is really about playing around with a little bit of fire polish, which the thing I like about fire polish so much is the holes are really easy to work with. I can imitate gemstone colors and a gemstone palette. And this was kind of my, my choice of uh, mixing some opaques, some uh, transparent fire polish, some things with some uh, gold finish on the outside, some Picasso finish ones. And really in all the sizes, so two millimeter, four millimeter, six millimeter, eight millimeter, um, a, a little mishmash of everything, but putting it together um, in a necklace that I really thought was, was really pretty. And this would be a necklace that would work long or short. I happen to make a long one. And when I make long necklaces, I tend to make them uh, long enough to double. 
And I think that, you know, people like to wear um, a necklace a couple of different ways. So I'll work around 36 to 38 inches, which will give everyone kind of a doubled at the collarbone kind of length. But these can also be worn long. You can make them really any length that you like. Um, you know, looking at shirts with collars, if you want to go on the outside of a shirt, yeah, you might be in the 22, 24, 28 kind of length. But really, you can kind of play around with whatever whatever one you like. I mixed um, a couple of all these different colors of beads. I added, and I forgot to put those in my tray, um, the little Delica Spacer beads, which um, I think can work really nicely with wire. And they will work really pretty um, as a little, kind of a little bumper against a, a bead. I mixed all of these little bits of chain or little bits of uh, fire polish in little combinations. And it was fun to play around with them. Um, I probably wouldn't wire wrap a single two millimeter bead, but you put three of them together and they look really great. They're really, really attractive to, and really nice. And I did little groupings of all different sizes in all different kind of combinations. Again, there's those um, uh, spacer beads in that nice uh, dark bronze that is one of my favorites. And I know we have trouble keeping it in stock. But mixing these little guys together gives me a nice a nice little palette to work with. And I think working with chain can be really uh, interesting and fun. And it can be economical as well. Um, again, smaller beads balanced a little bit nicer with smaller chain. But please, you do you pick out a bigger chain and really mix smaller beads with it and see how you like it. Um, so this is Colleen and a mix of a bunch of different fire polish, a uh, small link chain and those Zelica beads. I use the dark bronze uh, wire, the antique bronze wire with this bronze chain. And the wire's a little darker than the chain. I like that. I think it actually gives you a little bit of a place to play with another element um, that you can bring into your chain pieces. I'm actually going to do a demo today with the same chain, but I'm going to use gold wire instead. I was looking at my chain. So a little bit of gold kind of peeking out um, on either side of the beads. That's a great little, little add on. When I make these units, I usually stay um, under about an inch. So units that are longer than an inch can bend a bit. And if we're using fairly fine wire, we end up having that little bit of work hardening, which ultimately can make uh, your piece brutal and it can make something that's going to break. So let me just throw that ruler on this guy right here, this little link, um, which has a two millimeter, four millimeter, two spacers, a four millimeter and a two millimeter comes in at a, just a little bit more than three quarters of an inch. So not too long. Um, if I had it a lot longer, it would have that opportunity to really bend back and forth. Might not be the most durable uh, piece going forward. I did choose a fairly small lobster cloth and a jump ring to go on the end of this. And I also did use, uh, oh good, <laughs> I did wire wrap a two millimeter bead. So there's my connector to the clasp and to my, my jump ring on the other end. This little clasp, of course, could bite into this chain at any point to give me um, an adjustable length. So that's kind of a nice way to go. And you can add a little dangle to that ring if you want to kind of gussy it up, dress it up just a little bit. I like to do that at, on the ends of chain things, um, especially if I use a little extender or something. I'll put a little bobble there hanging down. Those two millimeter just look delicious. Um, super um, cute. Yeah, so fire polish is so easy to work with. It's so consistent, yeah. and golly, it 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 does it definitely gets um it doesn't get used in this position very often. We could do this with pearls. We could do this with gemstones. Um, here's my current. You guys know that I do a pearl mix at my in in some of my designs, but here's my current pearl mix of baby pearls. Oh, I love them so, so much. This would look super cute in this style, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I do these mixes, it's very random. I buy strands between two and four strands of anything I buy. And um, I just mix them together. It takes a little takes a little moment of kind of jumping into the pool to mix things together freely. But you can do it. It's totally okay. And if I had to separate these out, I would not. I would, um, here's my trick for separating things that are either purposefully or inadvertently mixed. I actually will just use the ones out of the mix that I want. 
and then put the mix back in the tube or back in the box. And eventually this mix will get unsorted and or get sorted and then be separate again. But I won't actually spend the time to unsort these unless I really need some meditation. Um, and usually I don't need it quite that badly, but sometimes, sometimes I could. So a little, a little mix of things is, is really fun to work with. And in, in this design, it would be really super cute. I just wanted to show you a couple other quick things from that we uh, did. I did purposefully for the retreat. And um, this was another one of the same kind of style. Now, <clears throat> you know, Janice just did an illusion knotting project a few weeks ago, which was beautiful with the gemstones that were just, oh gosh, they were, they were delightful. They were really kind of mouthwatering. And um, this, having this length of chain in between uh, each unit that we're going to wire wrap emulates the same idea. So we could use any kind of beads in this position. This happened to be a little of that um, Botswana agate, which is another favorite of mine. And I thought that with the gold wire and the gold um, the matte gold chain, I thought that was just really, really pretty. So again, chain, you've got some beads. You're good to go. Um, I also love our um, Padres, our popcorn Padres, so much. Oh, that Emily, that's beautiful. I just, I just started playing around with this, and I was, I actually made a couple units, and they were laying together on my workbench. And this was one of the little kind of ways I came up with using it. You know, I like to balance the size of my beads and the size of my components. And for me my eye says that I like to have things that are kind of in the same um, gauge or the same size. So if I have bigger chain, I would usually pick bigger beads, but sometimes with bigger but lightweight chain, it's fun to play around with small beads and have that contrast come into play. So having these three little units, I was actually able to wire wrap those three little units separately, added a jump ring and then attached it to my chain. So I did this one a little differently than what I'm gonna show you next. But I thought that these came out really great. And it was a way to kind of make a bead um, from something else. Yeah, so. those look, those are so delicious. I really they're like awesome. them. And they're, they're, they are definitely are in the fall um, scheme right now, color mm -hmm. scheme. We're all kind of seeing pumpkins and fall leaves and, you know, uh, things are going away from the gold and green of summer and we're going mm -hmm. into some other darker colors. So it kind of works well in there. Yeah, that's beautiful. And, you know, we did practice a little bit of simple loops last time. <clears throat> and I like simple loops because they give me a chance to use bigger gauges of wire. And here again is some fire polish. Um, anything with a little bit of paint or finish on the outside is right up my alley. Um, and I think this is the mm, Amazonite, the dark Amazonite or black Amazonite. Oh, yeah. Black um, gold Amazonite, I think is what yeah. that is. Yeah. Thanks. And then I used um, this particular chain, and oh, you're going to have to forgive me that I can never remember any of the names of the chains. Um, but this big chain has some units on it um, that we could use separately, but they also have jump rings holding them together. So I use those as the place where I could dangle pearls from. And these are our, where our nice, big, kind of chunky, uh, irregular pearls. And again, adjustability is kind of nice with a lobster claw because this could hook along here in any position and become a bracelet um, at any wrist size. So you don't have to worry too much of about fitting that onto someone. We can actually, you know, adjust it as we need it to go. And that nice big lobster claw, again, for me, balance is kind of where I'm at um, with my charms and my components. I kind of like to have them be in that same kind of balance with one another, right? No, that, that looks great. There is a couple of uh, quick questions sure. here. <clears throat> so those were, in that one, Emily, those were Padres and not six aughts, correct? The uh, This guy? Yeah, your little pod yeah. beads. Yeah. Uh, a six aughts would work. Absolutely. Um, as would a four millimeter um, uh -huh. fire polish or a four millimeter druck. Sure. Um, those would work in that same position. And again, you're going to have to forgive me. I never know the names of any of these chains. I have to look. Uh, that one's called Fancy Pants. Okay. And, one of my faves. and then this one, or no, that one that you have there is fancy pants. Is fancy pants. Yeah. The other one, I'll check it real quick. Okay. Yeah. I, I, you got me. Yeah. Right. Beautiful. 
Okay, so a couple things about cutting your chain. When you buy chain, it comes by the foot. And I would always buy a little more than I think I need because it's frustrating to run out. And um, we are going to cut links in these chains. So to do that, we're going to lose a link every time we make a cut. And that's okay. It's kind of the nature of this beast. We, have, we don't have any other choice but to do that. I have a particular way of measuring um, my pieces of chain to cut. And I, I gave everybody one of these at the, at the retreat. Um, but you can find this at your local yarn store. Um, and this is a, a coilless safety pin. So, so you could use any safety pin. I just find the coilless ones to be a little handier. Um, but for me, making that decision about the length in between the beads um, and how long it's going to be and then getting all the pieces cut is always kind of the beginning of, of a piece of jewelry that I'm going to make. So whether it be um, a simple one like this, which I think is, I feel like this is called Endless Love or something like that. Um, it's just a real classic, simple chain yes, or that's... is that right? Did they get yes. it right? You're kidding me. Good. Um, or using, um, something like this, which has a long and short. And I actually think this one is actually called long and short. Yeah. Oh, I love that one too. Yeah. This <laughs> one's really good. This one's actually a little easier to cut because you can actually look at the links and make that cutting decision. Um, but what I find to be one of the easiest ways to, to cut chain is to slide it on a safety pin. And again, let me know if this is um, fairly good in your view. And I'm going to cut, um, make my decision about how long I would like these to be. So the links that I'm going to do today um, might be uh, longer or shorter. I think a fairly short piece in between these um, smaller beads might be the ticket for this particular one. So I'm going to cut this at about four links. So I could count four, one, two, three, four, and cut the fifth one. And I could do that over and over again. Um, but I find a quicker way is just to keep feeding them on the safety pin. Let's get rid of that cut one. And then I can actually just look with my eye. That is the one I want. And pull that off. And this allows me to have all my little pieces in one spot. A, they're kind of captured on the safety pin. But B, I've made sure that I'm cutting them all the same length. Nice. And those, Emily, I'm going to mention the, the cutter you're using. That's a yeah. Tronex. Yep. The Tronex cutter. We just added some new Zuron cutters to oh, our uh, lineup. You'll see some uh, that Zuron with the retaining clip, which I love. Yeah. Um, we so are, uh, we're recommending folks that if you want the Tronex, our good friend, Lisa over yeah. at education, carries the whole line of what I like to call, I shorten it to Trons. <laughs> she carries all the Trons. So we recommend visiting Lisa over at Beejucation um, because there's so many different pliers to carry. Um, we thought we would just uh, uh, send people to our friends over at Beejucation uh, if the Tron X is something that you'd like to have for yourself. And of course, if you're using um, some of our other chains, like this chainmail one, I actually got two or three right today. This Yay. has one you can, this has links that you can take apart. So instead of having to cut any of these links, I can actually open up the jump ring in between and take it apart. So I don't lose anything doing this. And I would make that same decision. How long, how many links do I want to have in between my work? and take that jump ring right off. And if I just wiggle this around so I can see the opening, there it is. And I'm gonna grab two pairs of pliers. So this is the place where it's super helpful to have two chain nose pliers. You know, if you use your round nose pliers, you're gonna dent this metal. And we'd like to keep everything we possibly can to work with, right? So I'm just gonna open that, swing it open like a door or a gate slide that guy off, slide those rest of those guys off. And so then I can wire wrap right to the ends on this guy. I'm going to do my wire wrap loop and go right through that opening. And I could use this for dangles. I could use this for earrings. And again, space in between my beads, my uh, illusion knot of wire, right? So definitely don't um, cut if you don't have to. 
So here are some little pieces of, Kate, you're going to tell me the name of this one again because it's bugging. Sure. The uh, smooth sailing is the one you used with the um, uh, that's those rosary loops. Yeah. And then the, um, <clears throat> this one is, is this one? Oh, in your project. Hang on. Hold Sorry. Nope. Well, I got you. It's circle back, isn't it? Circle back. I believe it is. Yeah. This little guy. I love that circle back. It's so pretty. Um, and I'll show you another, I'll show you another little tip you can do with circle back, which doesn't work with all the chains. Um, but let's just say for argument's sake that you feel like this circle is not really your jam. You can actually pull these and turn them into ovals. Yeah. Because they're soldered. I love them so yeah. much. Yeah. 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 So we can actually make kind of a, a tiny paperclip chain out of this. Mm -hmm on our own with your own tools, your own fingers, right? So let me get into doing some wrapped loops. I'm going to use, again, I'm going to use my circle back chain to connect things. Most of the time, um, I would choose to connect my clasp first and work from one end to the other. That is sort of a you do you situation. You don't have to do that. Um, with a long piece that I might be making, I usually don't, um, decide the length until it's sort of something I can hold up to myself and make a decision about. So um, if you have a plan for your length, you can start in the middle uh, if you want and work both sides to the ends, or you can start at one end and work through to the other side. Uh, if you do a focal bead in the front, in the middle, um, you're going to want to work from probably from the focal, both sides to the clasp and the ring. But I think I'll start with the clasp end this time. It'll just kind of give you the realistic look of what I might be doing. I'm going to bring my camera down just a little bit. And um, I think I think I have, hold on, hold that thought. Okay. I think it might be nice to get rid of some of that distraction, right? Yeah, there we go. Is that better, you guys? You like that yeah. better? Yeah, that's looking good. I guess I kind of feel like it just is going to be easier to see a little bit of less distraction. So let me, let me just give me one moment. I'm just going to organize this a little bit better. Sure. So my hand can be there and there's some beads down there. That looks better. I think for me. Okay. So we're going to start with the clasp end. I need my round nose, chain nose, um, my, my wire straighteners. I'm going to go ahead and straighten this piece of wire. I cut a piece about, I don't know, 10 inches long or so. I would cut a piece mm, a couple feet long, maybe two and a half even. Um, the less you cut your wire and chain, the less waste you have. And so I think this is always kind of my go-to sort of smart way to go. I'm going to take my chain nose pliers, and just like I did last week, I'm going to make a bend in the wire. So the bend that I make is the place where that little loop is going to sit on top of. And I want to leave myself enough here to work with, to hold on to. And as you get better at this, that little piece can get smaller and smaller. Uh, so you waste less and less. But the next loop that I do will have no waste at all. Okay? So stick with me here. I'm going to take my round nose pliers. And since this is going with that circle, um, circle back chain, I'm going to make it kind of a small loop, which means I'll work down near the tips of the pliers for a small wrapped loop, right? I don't need to mark. I know I'm going to be close to the ends. Bring that back around to me, right? And here's that moment of connection. So whether you're connecting to chain or any other solid circle, here's the moment that you want to connect to your item. loops every time I do this. So it's pretty imperative that you pay attention to what you're doing and that you get into a good rhythm of remembering to use both loops. Okay. So I'm going to hold on to that intersection. I'm going to wrap the short wire around the long and I'm going to wrap towards with a little bit of pressure towards my plier. And that helps my wraps stay nice and tight together. If you overlap at this point, stop, undo, and then go again, okay? 
rather than try to continue. Unless you're thinking you're doing messy wraps. Okay. I'm gonna cut off my extra and there's a little end sticking out. So I'm gonna take my chain nose plier and just press it down with its brothers. Since this is at the clasp end, I will stay with a smaller bead. So not a, um, not a six millimeter and I could do a four millimeter. I could do a little stack here. Let's do a couple together here. Oops. And these little organizer trays, you know, any little art supply store should have these for watercolors. Um, they are really a handy tool, I think, for organizing my beads while I'm working. Okay. So there's my attachment to my clasp. And the next step is to make a bend above this bead. All right. So I'm going to make as small a bend as possible. So I'm at the very, very end of my chain nose pliers. Now, here's a good moment to think about loop direction. When we're doing wrapped loops, we don't really have the freedom to manipulate these loops direction um, much. And you can pick um, a couple of ways to do this. Either make the loops perpendicular to one another or parallel. I don't think it really makes much of a difference. Um, I will sometimes opt for parallel um, because I feel like it might lie a little flatter in one direction. So to parallel this loop, I'm going to have the bend be in the same plane as the loop. Okay. So right now this loop, the opening is side to side. If I turn my work, my loop is open top to bottom. Okay. So that would be perpendicular. This would be a parallel loop. That makes sense to everybody, I hope. I know it's hard sometimes. Um, not in person, everybody would get to crowd around and look at this one. So I That's made right, that looks good. <laughs> oh, <here's laughs> the wire. And I'm going to switch over to my round nose. And again, I'm going to make that small, small loop at the end. So I'm working with the smallest end of the round nose plier that I can manage and around. So the loop size here too, this is another place where it's a you do you sort of situation. You can make your loop size any size you like. I think it's actually interesting to push the envelope one way or the other. If you have very big beads, having a very small loop might be very interesting. And having small beads with a big loop also might be kind of interesting. So I'm gonna pick up my piece of circle back chain. I'm gonna slide it on the short piece of, on the piece of wire all the way down. And I'm gonna just pull it so that it connects loop to loop. So if you were doing just loops, you could just continue to connect here at the same point, right? Instead of the chain. You could connect to anything at this point. Pick up my chain nose pliers. Hold on to that little loop. That means I'm also going to be holding the chain at the same time. That's okay. Hold on, and I'm going to wrap. Again, a little bit of pressure going towards the plier itself. Filling up that gap that I prepared. And cutting with my flush cutter now towards my work. And this is a point with small chain. Be careful that you don't cut your chain at the same time. Just be mindful. Use my chain nose plier to kind of press down that little end in with its brothers so that it's connected, right? I think the other thing that's kind of fun working with chain here is this stuff actually goes pretty quickly. Um, you know, it, once in a while I'll do a necklace um, that's just wire wrap loops linked together. And um, it takes a lot longer <laughs> than making one with chain. So let me set this down and I'm going to start my next wrap loop. This is where we get to the lather, rinse, repeat section. JP always teases me about. We're going to do the okay. same thing over mm -hmm. and over again. Again right. and again. Yeah. But really, you know, it's going to move along quickly. Don't you worry. It does. Loop, I want to move down to the very tip end of the pliers because I want a small loop. And wrap around. Right. So sometimes we refer to this as the man with the scarf. Can you see the little head and that scarf kind of blowing in the wind? Yes. Right? I'm going to pick up my work and slide it into the loop and pull it through that little overlapping connection. It's a very easy thing to do. It shouldn't be hard. Okay. 
to grab my chain nose pliers, hold that loop, and again, I'm going to wrap. Now, the number of wraps you do here is really up to you. It's a you do you situation. If um, I probably work around three wraps most of the time, there's times where I work less. Um, I find with very, very small wire um, and very, very small beads that it's actually harder to work with less. It's easier to work with a few wraps, right? So now I'm going to pick some other beads. I've got some bigger guys here. And I'm going to put on this guy and this guy and this guy all together. They're very gemmy looking, all of these fire polish. I really, I appreciate so much how easy they are to put on the wire. I don't have to worry about the holes. I don't have to worry about things being poorly drilled or crooked or anything. They're super, super even. Um, it's where uh, gemstones and... Um, pearls and things, uh, the holes can be very, very tricky and they can be very inconsistent. Um, and you will learn how to not do that, <laughs> not buy those ones as you have experiences. So again, I'm going to work with a parallel loop. So I'm grabbing at the smallest part of the chain nose plier and I'm bending the wire over the plier. Now you could bend it away from yourself as well. It wouldn't matter. Be the same and change over to round nose pliers. Put that round nose plier right at the very tip. Wrap around so it's forming the loop on the jaw of the tool. Sorry, that went out of focus a little bit. How's that guy? And turn my plier, bring the wire back around underneath the jaws of the plier. So I'm at the little man with the scarf stage again. So you can see how this moves along and it gets you lots and lots of good practice. Slide on my chain piece, hold on to um, the loop and the chain with my chain nose plier. And again, I'm wrapping towards my hand, towards my plier, filling up that little gap I made by holding with the chain, with bending over the chain nose wire. Trim off and press that little end down. You know, what's nice about this is you do get some practice and what's better than practicing while making something? Nothing, you know, if you're practicing, <laughs> if you're practicing a new recipe and it doesn't turn out very good, you have to eat it. Well, this way you can practice and get something pretty. I like that story. Round nose right up against the end of that plot, that bend and the very tip of the plier that I'm using. Right. right around. So I have that little man with the scarf. Ooh, it's crooked. The scarf is not flowing. There we go. And I'm going to pick up my work slide the end of the chain in the loop okay and hold on to that whole loop and chain piece with my plier and wrap around see how my tail end now is getting shorter and shorter um, i just don't need as much as i did when i first got started and I'm, I'm sure Kate will be with me that she also can wire wrap with seemingly almost nothing. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. But I like I I like to get that. It's so satisfying that little tuck. Yeah, when, especially when you can you can't feel anything. Yeah, right there, it's absolutely solid. Okay. So I think it's time for mm, some opaques. You know, I do find mixing opaques and transparents a little bit of a challenge. It's not that it's impossible, but I do find it sometimes a little challenging. And this one, I'm going to do just two beads. I'm going to mix it up a little bit here, right? Instead of having um, a nice, predictable, tapered grouping, I'm going to I'm going to go crazy. Well, not crazy. 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 You go off the res here. <clears throat> okay. Hang on. Put that little 
plier right up against that little bend, wrap it around, and back around to point at me. All right? Now, if you were to make this loop and say, you know, that loop looks a little bit big. It does look a little big compared to my initial one. We can very gently tighten that loop up a little bit. But I don't need to make much of a change there. All right? Pull this through and connect it loop to loop. Hold on to it with my chain nose plier and wrap going pressuring toward my hand to keep those wraps really close side by side. And again, if you overlap, stop, undo, and start again. You really won't. I have not had the, let me, let me back up that statement. I have had not had the experience that this gets better if I keep going, right? Like if you keep whipping whipping cream, eventually you get butter, right? We're always going to bring it back to food, Kate. Sorry to say. Uh, always. 100%. 100. <laughs> 100. So I, I would probably not make a wire wrap loop with this piece. It's a little bit short. Um, shorter than I want to feel like I want to struggle with. So I'm going to cut another piece of wire. But that's part of the par for the course here. Uh, oh, I did cut one. I did cut another one. So I've got another piece. I'm going to do a quick straighten with my wire straightening pliers, um, which I could not live without at this stage of the game. And I noticed that this wire has a little kink on, at the very end. I'm going to save myself some pain and just cut that off so that I'm working with a nice, decent, straight piece of wire. Again, a bend, turn towards me, and make my loop right around the tips of the pliers okay. and attach ring loop to loop here that's the part where i get super excited and i just wrap 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 uh, and then <laughs> and then yeah. it's sad well yeah, you know sad. if you if you're just doing loops to loops you can do that you can do wrap the first wrap one close right and then wrap this attach with the second yeah you yeah. can yeah. Yeah. i think i've done this sort of design so much that i i tend to use my first loop that i make to connect right away yeah and, and then have kind of that second loop as a backup but it also doesn't matter because i'm still going to connect on that second loop so that first one kind of gets connected in and then um, the second one is somehow a little easier, right? Right. And I, I, you know, I've been wrapping like this forever and ever, but I'll tell you, sometimes I just get super excited. I'm all, oh, and it's done. And yeah, no, it's. Yeah. And you're like, oh, tears. Yeah. Connect. Right. Really. Right. I forgot to connect. Arr. So it still happens to you make me. a pirate sound. Arg. That's right. Right. All right, I'm gonna stack this one up with a few beads. And again, I think it's fun to be a little less predictable because you have a lot of choices here. You can add a lot of beads, you can add a few beads, but here's a nice little here's a nice little grouping. And actually, you know what? Let's go for it and get one of these guys on here. Oh, did I use that in the last one? I used that one in the last one. Let's pick one I didn't use. I think it's fun to be a little less predictable. And I think this is a juicier, um, more delectable kind of combination, right? Um, again, keeping myself under that one inch kind of length. Excuse me, I needed a little sip of water there. <clears throat> Slide all those guys down. And again, uh, Oops. Thanks. I just dropped my pliers. Oh, um, perfect. Let me just grab another pair that I've got sitting here beside me. Different wire. So I'm just going to grab that guy. Oh. Went all the way down to the carpet. Sorry. Oh, Sometimes it sounded like it landed on my little work, my little uh, tray, my little tr um, shelf unit, but I think it went all the way down. Darn. And round nose again, right up against that angle. 
Okay, let me turn this so we can make sure we're all, we are all seeing the same thing. So I'm I'm on the top and bottom of my wrapping wire, but I'm right up against the angle that I made, right? Now, if this happens to um, mean that you lose that 90 degree angle a little bit, it's okay. That'll be fine. Don't you worry. Just check in on my other screens to make sure you're seeing what I want you to see. Yep. Yep. You're looking good. Wrap it over. Turn my plier. Bring the wire back around. And this is kind of, I sometimes refer to this as the magic moment. Um, take a moment and say, okay, do I need to connect anything to this? I do. So you can avoid that. Uh oh, I wrapped it closed and I didn't mean to. <laughs> Darn, right? Pull it through. Hold on with my chain nose plier. And again, I'm going to wrap around, putting pressure towards this tool just slightly. It's okay if you have to, you know, re grip or anything like that. That's fine. Take your time. Get it nice and wrapped around. I'm glad I picked that gold wire to use today. I think it's a little more yeah. visible. It and looks nice. It does, it's kind of a nice contrast. Um, you know, I often kind of think about designing as um, picking um, contrast. Either I'm going to have a lot of contrast or I'm going to have a little bit of contrast. You know, Kate's band shirt that she's got on today is a black and white shirt. So the white is really, really vibrant and really contrasty. It shows really brightly against that black. You know, if it had been in gray, it would be a subtler contrast. So contrast can be color, but contrast can be size as well. You know, I could have chosen um, really, really even smaller chain than this, which I often work with for my own uh, things that I make to sell. Or I could have stuck with really, really small beads for this whole thing and had that really kind of interesting element of, of more contrast by the shape or the size, right? Okay, I'm going to do one more of these, and then I'm going to move on to talking a little bit about adding dangles and things with head pins, because we did really not touch, we just touched upon that last time, and I think it's such a good, um, uh, it's such a good thing to think about and um, have a little, have some thoughts about it. Let's have That's some right. Thoughts. Let's have some thoughts. I think Roscoe's having some thoughts. Roscoe is having some thoughts and good that you could tell they, they finished off their peanut butter that I gave them apparently in the other room. Perfect. And that must mean that it must be that the Amazon guys here. Right. <laughs> Cause the groundskeepers are already gone. They're also a Wednesday morning phenom here. Um, they come through on Wednesday morning at about seven. So we get to bark in early because, you know, those groundskeepers, who are those guys? Who do they think they are? Walking right. around the and making blower noises and stuff, right? I mean, come on now. So here we go, wrapping this loop closed. And I'm going to show you a neat little trick here in just a second because this went a little awry. So I'm hoping that we can see this in pretty good focus. I think so. Yeah, my wraps are a little bit spread apart, mm -hmm. and for myself, um, for things that I'm making, I would probably give this a little first aid. So I'm going to finish this wrap off first. That way, it's done, and I don't have to worry about that little pokey end getting involved. And I'm going to actually scooch my wraps just a little bit with my chain nose pliers. So did you see that little move? It was really small and subtle. I'm just scooted them up gently towards my loop. I'm gonna make sure that little end is down, looks like it is. So now my wraps look a bit better. Nobody's gonna know. Nope. Nobody's gonna know that you did this, but it is a place where it's gonna take you more time. And depending on what you're making and how much time you wanna invest in this and how much effort, being as efficient as possible, so doing things correctly the first time, um, I think is a benefit to keeping your time kind of rolling along and not um, having to do that on every one that you do. Okay. So, you know, if you have to do it, that's fine. But do you want to do it every time? Probably not. Right. Let me pull up a couple small guys because I really like those little ones as little bumpers. They look, I think they look really cool. 
So if this is a, I was planning on necklace with this, but if I was planning bracelet, I might have made the chain links in, in sections in between half as long. And I probably would not have made as many long units because look what happens when we uh, dangle that longer unit. It kind of is a straight line, right? So for a bracelet, I would probably keep my units a little shorter. Um, and I probably would have my chain link spaces in between smaller as well, because really you're not going to see too much of this with the length that I've got now. If I had half that many links, I would see a lot more beads. Um, but that's just me. That's my design idea. You can do that or you can do whatever turns you on, right? I would, I am, am anxious now to do this one with the baby pearls. <laughs> You know what I'm yep. going to do the rest of the day um, yep. is, is doing this with those baby curls mixes. Um, yeah. And they will be real tasty, I think. Yes, uh, I agreed. Kate and Cynthia and I are, we like to describe things as with food references. 100% we do. Janice does too a little bit when she talks about yes. being delicious. Right. Okay, bring that chain down and slide it in so it's connected loop to loop. And go ahead and wrap this close. Any questions out there for me, Kate? Or is it, No, you are covering it, Em. Uh, I think we're in good, um, we're in good shape. Good. Let's see. I'm going to scroll back a little bit, but what Leslie said, she said, Kate, I could be watching you wire wrapping you. Both. <laughs> Do the same thing. Yep. Kate taught me initially. My very first wire wrapping class was with Kate. And, wow. you know, I don't, I don't believe, honestly, I don't believe that one class teaches you everything you need to do. So no, I think you need to actually do some wire wrapping to, um, uh, get the handle on this and get it kind of in your genes, in your genetics. Um, right. Sort of the way <sighs> I used to, I, I remember watching my mom make pancakes and um, I'm the youngest of five. So there were many pancakes that came before me for <laughs> <laughs> do it. And she would flip the pancakes over and, you know, every once in a while one would get a little bit too dark, but generally her pancakes were pretty even cooked and I remember going off to college and having my own apartment and a Sunday morning came along and I thought oh, I'm gonna make pancakes because I know how to do it I've seen my mom make pancakes I can make those pancakes right. I've never right. made them never made them for myself before and so they were a mess I mean it was a hot <laughs> they, were they were uncooked ones and I remember going to my mom and I said oh, you know how do you how my pancakes were a mess and she said well you know, you got to do some pancakes <laughs> before you can really do pancakes. And so I feel the same way about making wire wrap loops. You need to do some. And so yeah. it doesn't, I don't care what the project is. I don't even think you need to do them as a practice loop. I think you should sit down and make something start to finish. And, you know, each loop can vary a little bit. No one will see it. You might notice it, but don't be the first person to point it out when someone says nice wire work. Don't say they're all the loops are different sizes. Just say thank you. Right. Um, and as you get more practiced at this, you will have to focus less on each one and it will be more pleasurable and you'll relax a little bit and it will get um, uh, it will get better. I promise. Yeah. Much more second nature. More second when nature. One of the things that I always like to mention, and, you know, back in the day when we had the um, bead magazines and stuff, right, you would see wire wrap um, projects in the magazines and some were perfection like yours and some were not perfection. And so when you're thumbing through, you know, I was a very harsh critic. Oh, absolutely. Um, and so just those little tips of pushing that little end of the wire in and making your loops in the same plane, all of that, I think, makes such a difference in the quality of your work. And like Emily said, it doesn't really matter if you're 
loop is a little bigger, or a little smaller, you have some imperfections, but you know, it set the bar high. And the more you practice, the more you're going to get, uh, hit that perfection in that loop every single time. The better your pancakes will come out. That is exactly, exactly right. <laughs> and so M, did we need to talk about anything else in the process there? You know, really, this is um, this is a lather, rinse, repeat situation. Mm -hmm. So I could continue on with this. Um, I could call it quits right here and say I have a bracelet. Right. Um, but this is this is the process. Keep going um, as many as you as long as you want this to be. I generally cut um, enough chain pieces of what I think I'm going to need mm -hmm. minus a couple. So mm -hmm. to keep myself from wasting chain and making all my chain pieces all the same size, um, I because each project I might do might be a little bit different. I will mm -hmm. cut enough chain pieces that I think I'm going to use. I will leave one on my safety pin as my measurement. And then I will get some more kind of as I need it. Oh, nice. But um, I think it would be fun to just look at um, doing a quick jump ring attachment also. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see what this, or a, a quick um, a head pin attachment. Attachment, and, right, to do, a, to do a dangle or two. Yeah, to do a dangle or two. And maybe I'll just do it on this guy. This is kind of a fun little piece of wire, a little piece of chain that we had that we created. And um, Janice uh, has a quick question for you, though, Em. Yeah. She says the 24 gauge wire, um, when it starts to get a big, a bit thin, how long can each unit be before it starts to bend? And can you swap out 22 gauge wire just as easily? You know, I chose the 24 gauge for this particular project because I felt it balanced um, size wise with the Chain. It's a chain. Yeah, so I agree. Definitely could go up to 22 or even 20 gauge with mm -hmm. these polish. That's the beauty of having something that has super, super, super consistent holes and it makes life, um, can make life really easy. I don't usually make wire wrap loops bigger than 22. Mm -hmm. It's a little wasteful of wire. So it's a little more expensive. Uh, it's also harder on your hands over time. Mm -hmm and be something that will make your hands ache. So I, I find that 22 is about my top end for a wrap loop. Mm -hmm. um, if I was using a bigger chain, I could definitely go up. I would keep my links about under an inch, my units that I'm making with the wire and the beads, under an inch to give myself no worries about things being getting distorted or bent or anything like that. Um, for what I do in my personal work, I probably use more 24 gauge than anything. Mm -hmm. That's like the one I use the most. Mm -hmm. What Janice yeah. is saying here is that bead units on 24 gauge longer than one inch is the longest that Janice prefers to go. Yeah. So we're saying about the same thing. About you know? the same. Yeah. 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 And, you know, maybe longer than an inch. Let me just grab this guy again here and pop a ruler on this. Mm -hmm. where we're at so um these are about an inch and an eighth mm -hmm. loop to loop not having them off the piece is a little harder to tell but um and these are done with uh 22 gauge mm -hmm. so. whoops we lost your let me put that back here so load that sorry about that um and this the... is about three of these links don't think i could get a fourth one in there without mm -hmm. having them distort a little bit more. Right. Sometimes I also take the tails of the wire down and around the bead unit. So if I'm doing kind of that tornado wrapping over a bead unit, I could go a little bit longer because the wire that's wrapping on the outside of the unit kind of um, stabilizes it a yes, little more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show you um, something I made years ago, and it's not a very practical bracelet to wear. In fact, I don't think it has a clasp on it at the moment. But you guys, you guys know how I feel about pearls. Yes. Um, and this is a piece that I made um, using head pins that I made myself and pearls. And I, I attached the pearls to a flattened paperclip chain, long paperclip chain. You can see the, the links are almost the size of our paperclip chain that we have, big paperclip chain that we have. But I actually use scrap wire for almost all of these. And I put aside a little piece earlier 
um, when we were wire wrapping. Here it is, right? This little piece, it's a couple inches long, maybe two and a quarter or so. Yeah, about two and a quarter. And even with a piece that was maybe half this, so maybe an inch and three quarters or ish, um, I could actually make a head pin with this and have it be useful still to me. So I'm going to take my wire cutters, my flush cutters. I'm going to cut the little, the end flush. So I'm going to cut a little tip off that because I could see it was not flush. I'm going to take my chain nose pliers. Sorry. Maybe I'll, should I bring back my whiteboard to work on here? So yeah, maybe. That sounds a little confusing. Yeah, right. there we go. Yeah. I think that was actually smart to do with this wire. Yes. I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to grip right on the very, very end of that wire and I'm going to bend it around so it makes a little baby, super baby shepherd's hook and I'm going to flatten it to itself. So this is something we don't really do much with wire. We don't usually collapse the loop on purpose, right? But I'm going to make it all the way to nothing, as flat as I can make it. And then I'm going to grab a bead, put it on, makes a head pin. That's a free head pin, by the way, you know, that, that head pin was made out of wire I was going to throw away. So I consider that a free one. Right. My, wire, my, my chain nose pliers make my bend. My round nose pliers are buried now. Here we go. So this is a good exercise in reminding yourself to deal with those connections because as I wrap this around, I don't want to close this off, right? I want to attach it to something. I'm going to take, I know this is all gold and silver kind of mishmash together, but you guys can work with me here. Yeah. Right. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to wrap that loop closed on that chain. So no waste here. In fact, that piece is long enough to do the matching one for the other side. I think this is going to be kind of a cute little earring, actually. Maybe with all the mixed metals, it's going to be very fun. Yeah, I, I, you know me, I like mixing the metals. Right. That's already got a flush cut on the end. So I'm going to bend the end over. A little shepherd's hook, collapse it. And grab a bead. I'm so happy that mi mixed metals are, are in. Um, it makes me very sad when mixed metals are not in. I, I just think that when folks say, I only wear gold, you're, yeah. well, you're really restricting yourself, right? Yeah. Don't, don't limit your, uh, your metals. That way you can just get more jewelry. Yeah. And I'd go, um, you're down a little bit, drifting a little. Yeah, there you go. Sorry about that. It's all right. And local distance and. I know. Easy to drift. Oh, Roscoe, what are you barking at? Oh, I got to go back. I got to back up the train. My head pin, I collapsed it too much. Oh. Hold on. Just with my fingers, I'm going to undo that loop I made. And I'm going to nip this guy off. Even working with this small amount of wire, I can do a lot. I was too good at that, bending that guy down, I think. <laughs> too collapsed. Too collapsed. Sometimes I do another bend up so I have like a, th like a little triangle. Not a triangle, but... I'll bend it up and then I'll bend that bend up as well. So it's a little, um, I got you wider. You know what I mean? I do. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Picking up what I'm putting down. I like that little way of doing a head pin a lot. I do too. And I think we forget, you know, that it's nice to, it's nice to have every, um, item at our fingertips, but sometimes we don't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can make your own. Connect it to my chain. That. And I think it's always it's always good when the teacher has to make a change. That's right. Right? It's 
it's very instructive. So out of that two and a quarter inch wire scrap, I was able to make two head pins. That's pretty, that's darn good. If you ask me. That looks great. Right? So that's kind of coming along. This is a, I love this chain mail chain. I think it's super cool. I'm going to add more to it because I want them to really dangle. But I love it. Yeah. Really it's pretty. pretty. Yeah. Cool. So any of the head pins that you might come into contact with, um, these will all work in the same fashion for you. You can mix them and match them. And here are some two inch head pins in a bright silver. And I'm guessing that these are at least 22 gauge. They might be 20 gauge, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do, mm, mm. I'm designing on the fly, Kate. I know. I like that story. Do you like it when I get crazy here? Design I like standing on the fly. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm going to do a longer dangle. Ah. And I think it's fun to stack beads in unexpected ways. Now, if I was doing an earring with these head pins and wire wrapping all this stuff together, I actually like to do what I call the assembly line process. So instead of just doing one and then building the second one and expecting it to match, which, you know, we all, earrings mostly match more um, sisters than twins, right? That's right. I might have a bad tip on the end of this head pin. Let's see. I do. Oh, and it's the wrong bead. No wonder. So those two millimeters looks like it's a bit of a tight fit on this guy. But all these other guys are going to do it. Sometimes it's not you. Sometimes it's the bead. <laughs> That's right. Right? There we go. No? Wow, it doesn't want to go on. That's unfortunate. I had a plan. I was having a plan. Ah. There's one. I was having a plan. That's quite of unusual. Um, I would maybe trim off the end of this head pin as well. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to make a pair of earrings, I do it in the assembly line process. I get all my beads on my head pins and I do the same moves back and forth across the pair. Okay. So I have a chance here to compare what I'm doing to make sure that things are as similar one to the other as I can manage. Make a loop up and over, turn it around. So there's my man with the scarf. Man with the scarf. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And wrap around. So here's a moment where I can check that these are about the same. This one's a little bit bigger. I'm going to just scooch it down a tiny bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap. Oh my goodness, did I hear a, somebody in the background there, Kay? You did. And since Funny. these are going to be earrings, I don't have to connect it to anything, right? I know that I'm going to be able to open the loop on my ear wire. And these are going to be done. And I'll cut off the extra. Who did I hear in the background? Is that Alfie? You did hear Alfred. Alfred. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to see if I can get him. Oh. Tuck down that little end going around. And same on this side. So, you know, why you wouldn't make earrings for Christmas, I don't know. This is a pair of earrings, I don't know, under five minutes per pair. Nice. Right? Cool. Okay. Hang on. A Where's second. that Alfie? I, I need to see the Alfie. Yeah, let me. I think I have a need. This, need is, a cat. this is a workout. Hang on a <laughs> second here. He, uh, Chris just got back from the store, so 
Alfred wanted to see if. Oh, there hi. Were hi, Billy. Hi, Alfred. Treats. Oh, my goodness. There he is. You're He's such wrong. a big boy. You were such a little kitten. You were such a little kitten once upon a time. Do you see oh. Emily? Hi. Alfie. Alfie. Hi, Bubba. Hi, good boy. He says, yeah. I, I, uh, I, yeah, but, you know, everybody sees my belly. It's embarrassing. That's right. He just went to the vet. The vet said he is the actually one of the biggest cats <laughs> he's ever seen. And he's not particularly fat. I mean, look at Alfred's head and my head are almost the same he's size. He's just big boned. He is. Look at that. Look at that. Look at those paws. Look at that cat paw. Yeah. I mean, it's giant. He's, yeah. he, he's big. So. I have this memory of Chris walking him in the hallway at your yeah. office. And he, yeah. they would walk along together with this. Alfred always had his tail sticking straight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that so, tail. I see it. There, there he is. Whew, I got to put him down. I mean, look at him. I mean, he's a bit. Look. He's I mean, a big boy. He's a giant boy. All right, babes. Everyone's so happy to see you, Alfie. <laughs> Good boy. All right. Let me see if I could put him down without throwing my back out. Thank you, Alfred. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Alfred, uh, the cat scale at the vet went up to 30 pounds <gasps> and so did Alfred. So on his chart, it says 30 plus. I'm winded. I'm telling you that cat. I mean, he's, I know he's giant. He, he really, crazy. like when he gets up, he puts his paws up on the counter and he's just standing there oh, whoops sorry 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 yeah. um anyway yeah he's my <laughs> are i did some <laughs> your workout for the day some lifts, you, yes sit ups with alfie that's right so i didn't mean to uh hijack no, the end of your piece M, but those i think that was really great um i'm serious i'm like totally <laughs> Get some water. <laughs> Alfie. Oh my goodness. Oh, my God. oh hoo -hoo. um, I love those tips though that you gave about how to um do one earring and the other earring in the steps because that's also I think uh um what do I want to say? A tip or a technique that helps you really perfect your um the look of the earring. Yeah. I mean, you know you can have, you know, loops again that aren't the same size or whatever, but that one after another tip is awesome. I, you know, I, I think the, the final benefit to doing that is that your earrings are finished at the same time. It's not like you did one and then you have to go remember what you did to make the second one. Exactly. You, you really finish about the same moment. And so that's also a benefit better to get things done in, in that, in that assembly line process. So. A hundred percent. Okay. Hey, this was a fun one. I, this was a fun one. M I, uh, I have a little, um, my box. I'm trying to see if it's sitting here of all of my pearls. Mm. Um, a nice little wire wrapped pearl, uh, project, um, would be kind of fun. Yeah, I'm just kind of looking around, going, "Huh, what I don't can know." I put off, we can make a pearl mix. We yeah, should, we should see if we can collab on that and make a pearl mix because yeah, you know what we can yeah. do because we'll we're probably going to be in Tucson at the same time, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. Are you yeah. making your plans? Are you resis yet? Yeah, reservations are made. Christine is booked. We are good to go. Yeah. So I think you and I can do some pearl shopping together and make yeah. a. A, a good uh, pearl mix for sure that's coming up. Mm -hmm. um, let me also say uh, that, let me add, um, let me go to the project page for this. Hang on just a second. I want to share my screen with all, the, all you folks here. Here is the uh, product page or the project page, friends. Um, I was checking on all of the, the, the product we have for it. And 
we had a little bit of an inventory glitch with our circle back chain. So it should be showing back in stock very soon. I emailed a 911 over um, because there was a little bit of a glitch there. But um, I also wanted to show you uh, over here under the project info, my friends, you can just go straight to like, let's look at the six millimeter fire polish. You can go straight to the fire polish and choose whatever fire polish floats your boat. You know, we're working on restocking some of that fire polish that we carry. You know, the thing about some of the beads now that we're seeing, especially like with the fire polish and some of the basic colors, um, we're like, wait a minute, how come we can't get that color anymore? So we're working on revamping some of our check glass uh, categories, which uh, you folks will be seeing soon. And you know, um, what I would do with this is is get into the check glass section mm -hmm. and start by color. Mm -hmm. You know, pick, pick a single color like green or blue or pink. Mm -hmm. And then fill in the recipe. I ended up with two six millimeter, two four millimeter, one three millimeter, and two two millimeters. Mm -hmm. So that color combination, any of those color combinations, that, mm -hmm. that little melange of, of mixes to put them all together would be, is easy to do. Um, you know, you could do it, this would be beautiful in, in golds. It would yeah, be I just pulled up this matte deep turquoise copper Picasso. Look yeah, at how pretty that is. Amazing. I, we probably didn't have that one when I got these ones, you know? Um, yeah. I would have chosen that. So picking your kind of gemstone or your gemmy colors by mm -hmm. color, kind of keeping that color palette the same, I think it's a great way to to kind of maximize the, the oomph of this. No, so, 100%. You could also say, I'm going to do, I want something in gold. And so look at your, get your color wheel out, look at your color wheel, pick, pick things in the yellow that kind of blend into that yellow scheme. Like mm -hmm. yellows and golds, gold and carnelian looks amazing. So mm -hmm. something in that orange yellow family would look really, it would really push that gold color forward and it would really look amazing with it. Look really nice. I, I love yellow glass for sure. Yeah. I also put up here M on the screen, under, uh, we went to learning, we went under bead shop basics and we went to wire wrapping. This has a link to your show from last week and a link to this handout oh, yeah. um, that's there that you can go ahead and download. Um, it was really such a great, um, I do use the your chart, I do all of that. It was great. I do use the handout in the show. Um, and I use it to draw on. And so mm -hmm. I would print out, if you can go look at that, um, the pages, the two pages that have the loop, just the loop illustrations on it, print out, if nothing else, print out those two pages, because as you follow along through doing the, um, doing the, the techniques, you can actually draw in like I did, and it'll help kind of solidify things a little bit in your brain, mm -hmm. give you a place to kind of refer to. And then you did it. You made those things look that way. So you have the power to do this and the skills to do this. It's just yeah, a hundred percent. This looks, it's such a fantastic handout. So thank you so much for yeah. completing that. And it looks like people are asking um, about the, we do have some small pearls. Um, I'll be on the lookout, um, especially uh, Tucson will be in February for sure. But we'll be on the lookout because Alice is like, I want baby pearls. I want tiny baby pearls. So um, so Janice put up all the pearls. Our pearls are something else that kind of ever evolve because we don't always, we're not always able to reorder um, the same, you know, because they're natural. And you can't always get exactly the same look again. Um, you know, uh, over the years, I have recreated the pearl mix multiple times. I've shared it with everybody at the, um, at the retreat. And that was so nice. It is ever evolving. It's never mm -hmm. the same price. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Always different. Always different. Um, okay. Well, um, I guess M people are just, I guess I'm not going to see you for a couple weeks, but then we have like two weeks again in, or 
two shows, three shows in November. I can't remember. Yeah, in November. We've got a lot going. I, yeah. Next week is going to be uh, our last episode of our master class. I'm, oh, yes. I'm literally wrapping all that up. Um, we've got our new monthly mix coming out. On Friday, I'm going to talk about some of the brand new um, pliers that we've just gotten in. Also, I've got a bag of all of our new nun uh, components and clasps I'm going to be talking about on Friday. So we'll talk about a whole bunch of new stuff then. Cool. Um, well, thanks, Em. What a great show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, today. I like it. Here's uh, Billy Idol and I thank you very, <laughs> very much. And um, we'll chat soon. Absolutely. We'll Absolutely. We'll see you guys. It's very All nice right. to see everybody. Thanks for hanging in with us. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk with you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.